God is. It's one of the six gates of Rome. It was the safest one. No enemy could come up from there. There's just a park and a cliff. We'll see that pretty soon once we get out some. Safest gate and the oldest one as well. It's from 1360. The gate, the tower, the whole construction. But there's something else special. Once we get inside there, you will see that in the first big door is a small door cut into the big. They called it a manhole. <laughs> and they called it so because when the gatekeepers opened it, the hole was just big enough for one man to fit through. That's why manhole. When somebody wanted to get in, he had to knock at the small door. <laughs> and behind the big and the small, inside were two guards. It was their job to take care of the manhole all night long. When somebody was knocking, they asked for the name for of the person. If they didn't know that name or they were in doubt, they simply didn't open it. They only opened it when they were convinced it's the right person, the citizen. Well then, they opened the little door. But when you see it, you will realize it's small and low, making it hard to get in on purpose. You know, people had to bend down and get in head first. Not a good position. <laughs> For the one who get in. You know? <laughs> but really cool for these guards. He was standing inside from both sides. Looking who's coming. If they made a mistake, they could easily correct it. <laughs> well, that was the long story of the small manhole. Now let's go and have a look at it. And we have this cliff on three sides around the city. No enemy tried to get up there. Only by one side. There was a chance for an attack. And that's where the high wall is, with the rain pumps. There all the people were standing, on a high position, shooting down on all these enemy companies. Our main enemy were the neighbor's cities, the Bishop of Würzburg and the Count of Nuremberg, to mention just the worst two. Because they tried it so often, but they never made it. Not the two I mentioned, and not all the other enemy we had. This city wasn't taken until the Thirty Years' War, which lasts from 1618 to 1640. And there's one detail you should know. We got the city rights, 1172. And Rodenburg was conquered first time in 1631. Not bad. <laughs> But then it happened in only three days, and it was changing everything. The one who did it was General Tilly, leader of the Imperial Catholic Army in that war. <coughs> he was coming from Magdeburg, that's a city in the east of Germany. He burned it down to the ground, destroyed it. From there he was moving to the west with an army of 40,000 men. And they were coming close to this city. And they were just passing by. They were not interested in Rodenburg. But something came in between that stopped them on their way. That stopped 40,000 people. Guess what? It happened today. Rain. Rain, yes. It was raining cats and dogs for a whole week. You can maybe imagine what kind of streets people got. Back in those days, it was all mud. And these troops got hundreds of carriages, wagons, cannons. They made no miles anymore. They got stuck in the dirt running out of food. All these people were hungry and freezing, because after the rain it got cold. So there was a huge army <coughs> in a desert situation. They had to have a winter quarter, a dry place to stay, enough to eat. Urgent. So the general decided that they will have a winter quarter in the next city. Unfortunately, he picked us, <laughs> sending a mounted messenger to inform us that this is going to happen, that they are on their way to us and we should be ready when they arrive. Have everything organized for them, 
open the gates, let them in, and supply them for the winter. This was a bad news. We were 6,000 and they were 40,000. We were Protestants and they were Catholics. And it was a religious war, at least the first half of it. Later they forgot why they started it. <laughs> Plus they were not nice guests, not soldiers, but mercenaries. The only thing they wanted was plunder and steal. Take all our goods and things, our wives and daughters. And we should let them in. And let them do all this without fighting? No way. This were brave people. And the city senate of Rotenburg decided that it's better to stand up and fight and hold the city. And we dared to. And I have to tell you, that didn't work. <laughs> It was a short battle, because as weak as the enemy were, they got a lot of big cannons. Once they realized that we won't let them in, they were shooting from a distance against our wall, and we were shooting back on them once they were closer. But on the third day of the attack, we ran out of gunpowder. There were just a few barrels of gunpowder left. It was all stored in the powder tower which was one of these towers along the wall, a part of the fortifications, and a pitch-dark room inside, like towers usually are. And then something very stupid happened. <laughs> it's hard to talk about it. <laughs> One of our own people made this huge mistake. It was the guy who was in charge of the gun tower making sure that no unauthorized person gets access to it. But for some reason, he himself went in there. But with a torchlight. <laughs> maybe because it was so dark. In or maybe he just forgot what kind of tower it was. <laughs> you know, later on, we couldn't ask him what the hell he had done. <laughs> But the result was impressive. <laughs> he blew it up. There were some heavy explosions, a gap in the wall, right where the main attack was. Now we surrendered immediately. Hoping for mercy, we opened the gates and they came in. But there was no mercy. We had killed more than 300 of them during the attack, while we had lost just two people so far. One was the guy with the torch. <laughs> and the other one was standing too close. 